coloured tower block, the nasty edge of town. Interrupts the sunrise with a 15 story frown. The paint jobs look like piss stains, the grass is pasty brown. The council dropped a bollock, but they'll never pull it down. Franco is a failure by the age of 23. He used to be a rock star, now he works in HMV. To Kimberly, he's a pity shag with little else to choose. A recovering alcoholic, she works in bargain booze. They sell a tape of broken sign to the elevator door. Step inside and fornicate as it moves between the floors. For Franco, it's a mission. Sex is now a sport. For Kimberly, it's all about the risk of being caught. They silently pretend that they get any pleasure from it. And then they roll a spliff to make the other person vomit. Netflix as a sedative till eyelids win the duel. A tumbleweed existence as boring as it's cruel. No one said the twenties would be destitute and bleak. Formulating saving plans to see him through the week With the papers in the Rizzler pack that say you're nearly done Kimberly made a collage that said I haven't yet begun The strip lights are flickering The toddlers wear designers Graffiti on the wall that says Victory to the miners Destruction to procrastinate Convenience is queen Unhinged, uninhibited, unheard and unseen Hello everybody, my name is Matt Abbott, welcome to this week's Insta session, this is session number 44, which is bloody mad, isn't it? Um, tonight I'm very excited to be joined by Otis Mensa. Otis is a writer and performing artist with an alternative take on hip-hop music and abstract poetry, uh, focusing on art as a means of documenting journeys of introspection, Otis's work aims to demonstrate the personal and political power of vulnerable expression. So I'm going to invite... Um, off the shelf festival in Sheffield told me to check out Otis a while ago, and I feel bad that it's taken me so long, but I'm glad that I got there. Hi, hey, mate, you all right? Oh, here we go. Oh, he's gone straight away. Something I said. We'll get him back on. It's okay. So yeah, off the shelf in Sheffield. Um, somebody that I know works off the shelf called. Um, Penny Blackham, she was like, you've got to check out this artist guy, he's absolutely incredible um, and I did check out his stuff and then I was meaning to invite him to do an Insta session and it took me ages to get around to it so I'm very pleased that Otis is, is joining tonight, um, although he was on for like a second and then he went straight away so as I say, I'm hoping it's not something I said um, maybe I'll just read a very very quick short poem whilst he sorts his connection out Let's have a look. Okay, I will read. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is back. It's all good. I've saved you. Saved you having to listen to any more of mine. Was that? Yeah. Has that worked? Yeah, here we go. Hey, mate. All right. Hello. Sorry. Yeah, Can you hear me okay? Yeah, spot on, man. Spot on. Yeah, thanks for joining yeah. us. Yeah, likewise. Oh. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. I just sort of came in and then shut back up. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries, man. It was actually um, Penny Penny Blackham at Off the Shelf Festival. I don't know if you know Penny, but um, she told me yeah. about your work. And uh, yeah, it took me longer than it should have done to check you out. I and mean, as soon as I did, I was like, I've got to ask him to do an Insta session. So I'm, I'm dead pleased that you're on board tonight, man. Thank you. No, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So uh, are you based in Sheffield? Is that right? I am, yeah. I'm from Sheffield and based in Sheffield, yeah. Yes, indeed. Awesome. What's the scene like in Sheffield at the moment? Is it? I mean, obviously, it's hard to tell in COVID, but... Yeah, as you said, it's hard to sort of, like, uh, emotionally remember how great the scene was, but the scene was definitely great. Um, we've got some incredible talent here in Sheffield, some incredible poets. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, the, the poetry scene and the spoken word scene, of course, combined with in tandem with, with the musicality of Sheffield... Uh, definitely sort of helped recreate Sheffield for me because I moved away from Sheffield down south when um, when I'd finished sixth form to go and study for a year. And, you know, when you're from a place, it sort of has this home shadow over it. Um, but I was definitely able to shake off that shadow and sort of recreate Sheffield when I came back. And, and poetry was a big part of that, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah, that's interesting to hear. I think uh, as Northerners, we've got that self-deprecating like of Sheffield shit or whatever. But Sure. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to move away to appreciate it. But man, Sheffield's amazing. Sheffield is amazing. And um, yeah, I, you know, whenever I'm sort of uh, entertaining the idea of moving, I'm always uh, introducing the fear of missing it, you know, and everything 
It's beautiful, especially, you know, I was just talking about today, the nature of Sheffield, uh, you know, how, sort of how close we are to the countryside. It feels very uh, unique. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but there's, there's so much to miss. There's so much to yeah, miss. Yeah, totally. Do you think that the musicality of Sheffield was a big influence um, in terms of you getting into spoken word? That's a good question. I think as a, as a teenager, I, I always felt a little uh, bitter because I was always like, oh man, uh, like where are all the hip hop artists? Um, I just, may, maybe I didn't even feel like that overtly, but maybe subconsciously. Overtly what I was doing, I was just uh, concentrating all my attention online. I was discovering realms of art from the US, of course. Being a lover and appreciator of hip hop culture, that took me to Europe over the through the vehicle of the internet, you know? So, um, I, you know, I, I feel a very much, very much a child of the internet in that sense, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I wasn't really connecting to a local scene. Um, but every now and then I would go to record at a friend's house who was also a, an incredible artist. He was called Seppi. He's called Seppi. Um, and I, I, I felt in many ways that that was like a, a, a gateway to hearing and discovering about new artists. So through Seppi, I, I discovered uh, Matic Mouth and uh, his hip hop collective, uh, clubs and spades at the time and that was like whoa there's like there's incredible hip-hop in Sheffield that I didn't know about and then sort of talking to my dad and my dad buying uh, Hoods Underground CD and sort of like realizing oh he, uh, Sheffield does have this musical heritage this musical present that isn't necessarily just Brit rock or indie rock um, so yeah. I was definitely aware of of that Though whether I connected with it at, at the beginning, I, I possibly didn't, you know. So it took me coming coming back to Sheffield, rediscovering Sheffield's musicality through KOG, uh, through Franz Vaughn, through uh, Katie Fam and the Moonbavers, Jackie Moonbaver, um, independent hubs of music like Food Hall, uh, you mm. know. So, but yeah, I, I I'm so glad that that happened to me. I was able to experience that because it it really changed me as a as a person, you know, and how I relate yeah. to Sheffield as home. Yeah, I get that. I get that. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm glad that that happened for you. That's, it sounds really sounds like it's been really uh, inspirational for you to reconnect on that level. Yeah, for um, sure. Well, I'd love to hear some of your work if you're up for sharing a, a piece. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I'll begin Great. with a piece um, from my, my debut poetry collection. Um, the book is called Safe Metamorphosis. Um, and this is possibly my favourite piece in the book. Um, so the, the piece is called An Ode to Black Thought. Um, and speaking about, about hip hop culture um, and the beauty of hip hop culture, for me, hip hop really is uh, a beautiful portal into so many different um, poetic, intellectual and, and artistic movements. So, you know, my favorite hip hop artists are my favorite poets and my favorite philosophers. And one of my favorite poets is Black Thought of the Roots. Um, and this is an ode to Black Thought and hip hop culture, you know? So, yeah, cool. it goes like this. I had a dream I went to see the roots. The atmosphere was electric. Questlove played an eternal break of flavor to call out Black Thought, who rushed the stage like a floating spirit, both hurrying and taking time in one. Tariq was draped down in a black silk cloak that covered the whole stage. The cape of sorts was embroidered with red lines that ran parallel throughout the cloth like the blood vessels of midnight streets in Philadelphia. And his cadence, his cadence embodied revolution. Now like the dreams of my youth, when in sleep I sought out validation from favored artists, I woke myself up with a croaked inner voice proclaiming, I need that. If only I could wear its skin like my own. You know, the cape. And just rest, rest in the sound of reverence and just rest, and rest in it. I had a dream I went to see the roots. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, thank you. Oh, what a way to start, love that. Thank you so much. Um, so the collection, um, did you find that you were sort of writing to music and then translating it to the page and vice versa, or have you always written very separately, if yeah. that makes sense? No, that's a really good question. I think, I guess it. I guess it makes sense to define how I how I see poetry um, and how I see the. I, I guess to make a point that 
I see the the words that exist in the confines of my musicality as as poetic as my written work, you know? So in many ways for myself personally and individually, I'm sort of blurring the lines of where spoken word begins, where my hip hop music begins and where my written poetry begins. So there's always been this blur. Um, but in many ways, written poetry has been a sort of uh, escapism from, though I love writing music, it's my deepest passion. Um, it's been a sort of escapism from when I felt perhaps creatively blocked or perhaps when I had a little less attention span and I felt, okay, how can I write outside of the confines of, of nice. rhythm? Like sometimes yeah. I feel like maybe I don't have the patience to craft the flow um, within the structures of a beat, you know? So when, when, yeah. I, when I feel like that, it, it's straight to the page and it's straight to writing without, well, without music. And of course, in terms of the musicality, you know, I'm starting to get into production now and working on, on my own production. But in the past, especially as a teenager, it was, of course, relying on other collaborators to, work, to bring yeah. the musicality side of it. So sometimes I didn't have that. So when that was the case, it was like, okay, I've got this idea. I've got this train of thought. Let me just write it down. Maybe it will go to music later. Possibly not. Um, so that's the sort of um, that's the sort of thinking that I developed that kind of eventually led for me to say, hey, you know what? I think um, I think I've got a book in me, you know. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's fascinating. It must have taken it must have taken you a while to sort of figure that out, but I guess now you, you just get into a rhythm, don't you? And I suppose depending yeah. on what mood you're in or whatever. Nice. Yeah, most cool, brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'd love to hear another one if if, if you game. Yeah, sure. So uh, speaking of, of uh, that question, I guess this, this answers it really well. So this piece um, is, a, is called Shifting Sands, and it's uh, something that I wrote to music originally. Um, later to, to find, actually, I think the piece works better without music. Um, but I was very happy to have wrote it to that piece of music because it gave me a sense of rhythm um that sort of stayed with it even when the music was stripped away so yeah uh, this one's called shifting sands cool touch ground like a new man old friends full of old demons not sure i can exercise them head down at a cold zenith not sure that i know myself but assured you don't know me either yet you're surprised at that advice that you comprise the plea I can't surmise that all the words that leave your lips aren't lies. And I can see myself inside the things I've criticized. Living life on a lonely edge. No friends trying to talk me down. My delusions of grandeur expand until they break my body bound. Purpose is a hobby cloud. Grab shy as I groan and frown. See, I'd love to roll around, but I'm on the ledge. Burnt to the memorable mess. My choice is as narrow as death. I'd like to wallow way less. Over sorrow, their morals and stress. I very ponder at most. I'd like to visit the coast. Write novels on hollow post modern distress. Man shakes in the cold street and asks me for some spare change. I said, pray tell I've seen myself through better days. I proclaim that I have nothing, implying that I've got something. <laughs> because nothing is freedom to think and that's a victor's trumpet. There's a child in every adult commuting the imposter in the mirror is grueling. Every dream takes me closer to wiser, but every dream is but a dream that is fleeting. Thank oh, you. Brilliant. Oh, so many great lines in there. Um, every there's a child in every aisle. Uh, sorry, there's a child in every adult commuting. I don't, mm. That one jumped out. I don't know why, but uh, there were so many amazing lines. But that one. I just, I just love that. It's just so beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I, I actually wrote that poem, uh, though I used music to assist it. I wrote it in in commission of uh, being Human Festival here in here in Sheffield, um, and the topic was dreaming, um, dreaming in the Renaissance, and and I guess the the wider, broader conceptual idea of dreams. Um, so that's where that line comes from, you know, sort of how mm. how does perhaps capitalism detach us from our sense of imagination, our sense of dreaming? Yeah, uh, totally, totally. I do, like, I'm 32 now and uh, I'm, like, married with a house and I still keep thinking I'm just a kid. I, like, yeah. and everyone else is an adult. I'm, like, I'm actually just a kid. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> For sure. Um, <laughs> no, it's brilliant, man. Uh, what's your, what's your favourite venue in Sheffield? Oh, that's a good question. Uh 
it definitely has to, we, uh, you know, food hall definitely has to come into the conversation. Um, yeah. Just because, of course, I know what it represents. And also, you know, I think it was a big part of that rediscovery of Sheffield for me. So it was like, uh, I think I played this random show at, at West Street Live. And uh, I think it was it was either Katie or Jackie of Katie Fam and the Moonbavers. They were there and they were like, hey, we've got the show. Uh, I went there and I was like, whoa, this this like exists in Sheffield. Like people <laughs> like pushing the envelope musically, like uh, the wall is like created by bales of hay. Like it's grassroots, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Form. I was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know this existed. So yeah, definitely food hall. And then, then again, uh, places like Dina, Dina were, were, uh, was really yeah. sort of instrumental in me rediscovering Sheffield, going to word life, um, open mind, yeah. poetry night. Uh, so yeah, yeah. But there's, 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 there's a lot of beauty in, in sort of independent venues in Sheffield. We need more, we need more, we need more people to open them. We need, uh, we need to save these independent venues, you know? Yeah, totally. Totally. Well, hopefully after COVID, that might be a nudge. I mean, I know financially it's going to be tough, but hopefully people, there'll be just such an appetite for it, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. Cool. Yeah, man, they have some of them venues like Dina. Yeah, I love I love that venue. I always used to love the Riverside down at Kellam as well, but uh, I don't know if I still go in down at Kellam yeah. Island, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, quality. Uh, well, I'd love to hear more poetry if, you, if you're up for it. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um... I'll read a piece um, that, that I guess will be followed by another piece. So this piece is called Existed Once and sort of acts as an introductory piece. Uh, it doesn't actually exist in this in this debut uh, poetry collection. It's, it's a part of like uh, uh, my new sort of way of thinking, my new creative justifications uh, within this last year. Um, and maybe it's the start of a, a new poetry collection. I'm definitely working on, on a new book at the moment. So, um, but yeah, just to, to give you a little idea, it, it's um, a lot of my work tends to speak to the concept of vulnerability and this idea that there's a sense of community created. Um, when I share something that's cathartic for me and perhaps somebody else who relates feels less alone. Um, but somewhere down the line, I start to feel um, perhaps in some ways capitalism had seeped its way into my justifications. And perhaps it didn't always, it wasn't always about vulnerability, but sometimes I had to be honest with myself. And it was like, is it about getting to the next stage? Is it about getting onto the next magazine? Is it about not having enough followers, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I took a little time to reflect and a little self critique and realized that there is like a, a, a admitting my selfishness in the creative process, you know, and my sense of ego also in the creative process. And then I realized that also a big part of, in sort of response to that, a big part of why I'm creating is very much to document my very existence. Uh, you know, yes, this vulnerability does play such a huge part to it, but also it's just a means of my insulated self, my insulated ideas of saying, hey, these these were here. This is what I believed. I existed once. Um, I was a fellow folk of my artistic community. And so that spread uh, to this, this poem. Um, and a, a series of songs and animations called Otis Mansour Exists. But I'll begin with this, and it's called Existed Once. I anchor myself deep in its utility, the existential kind. Mortality, my distant cousin, a strange yet so viscerally related. We swap gut acid and dead skin, spilling anxious slobber into each other's mouths whenever we reunite for a death kiss. Expression and exhibition, graffiti and cardboard, my opera and ballet, soapbox vehicles to post more on liveliness, a hankering for cutting through noise. You see this itchy angst and throbbing sense of doom eases itself whenever I manifest the complexity and nuance of who I am in song surviving time. A soulful need to archive myself as fellow folk of the community. I was here. These were my ideas. This is who I am. I existed once. Thank you. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so that's a really interesting way of putting it. Really interesting way of putting it all. And I, it's hard, isn't it? Because you put art online and you want people to say that they like it. And the only way you can track that is, oh, number of followers I've got or being on this festival or being at this sure, venue. Sure. And you're naturally, like, instinctively looking for approval and you get sucked yeah. in, don't you? Yeah, yeah well, definitely. It's, uh, it can become a very, like, toxic... Um 
validation system, you know? Yeah, it really is. It really is toxic. And you find yourself spending six hours a week on your website and socials and one hour a week writing. And it's like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly that. This was sort of me recentering my, uh, my creative justifications and saying, actually, you know, I'm writing to archive myself. You know, it's beautiful yeah. if people listen and it's beautiful if people connect. Um, but I need to get this, this, uh, these feelings of anxiety, these feelings of uh, claustrophobia, everything what's going on around me politically and socially, I need to get it out as a means of documenting my very existence in this space of time, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well, good. Keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it's 10 to, so if you've got any that you specifically want to share, um, just a heads up, but at the same time, I'm not going to hold you to, you know, it's, do you do whatever you want? Like, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, I, so I guess I could perform a piece uh, that follows this. Um, so yeah, as I said, I, I began in creation of, uh, uh, starting with lockdown, I began a, a, a series of songs and animations called Otis Mentor Exists under this umbrella of thought. Um, I started with a song called Breath of Life, which features the incredible uh, Samuel T. Herring, Hemlock Ernst of Future Islands. Um, I collaborated with an incredible uh, illustrator and animator, Jim Spendlove, um, on the animation pieces. And these are all available on uh, youtube.com slash Otis Mensa. So, of course, that's O-T-I-S-M-E-N-S-A-H. Um, and I just released a live performance of one of the new songs today. So uh, that's also available on my, on my YouTube channel. But I'll perform a piece that I, uh, that I recorded um, at the, during the first lockdown. And it's sort of a, a means of thinking about overthinking, uh, reasoning overthinking with a sort of nuanced lens and thinking about perhaps the beauty that could come from that if I only I was to uh, document it. So yeah, this one's called The Thinks, also out on my YouTube channel. Mm. Hair in the comb, bare in the bone, don't fit the mold I'm in. Droopy and low, I'm hanging fruit at the symposium. Pick me till I bleed, I'm the breeze that carries your speech and the hole that they throw your roses and your clothing in, a game I'm lonely in. Play right, but I wrote you out of it. I'm out of it and over it. The circle that you clone me with the cycles that I row against. With oars for arms, crying wolves like doves and false alarms. Crocodile tear charms. My fear's still at large. But I became the iron that you scold me with and smile when you saw me in. To try and spot a supernova in a soul of sin. Hold the cliffhanger like bouldering when it don't stick like soldering. Salty trills of trigonometry at hierarchs Shrouded with magnolia at the loneliness From where forever grows to where the river flows From where you never know, somewhere you never go Pick a fight with time, pay a bill with trolls Just like a treasure to trove, I'm never letting go Hair in the comb, bear in the bone, yeah, yeah, yeah Stare in the bowl, wearing some old milk Fighting the things like climbing a sphinx Yeah, 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 where will I go, where will we my mother said the last trumpet cried, a foot and fright, I never heard it, staring in the sun benign, curses, I must have missed that bus of mine. Heard all over a herd of caged birds, taking flight with a bird in mind, a sight that'll burn you blind, I bend the line, beginning of everything that's then defined, in a night fight with an empty life, conspire against me, I just fold in quarters, in the trenches became a friend of night, and it was then when I was sanctified, carry my cross the pain as temporary, my Armageddon won't be televised. A revolution proves behind my eyes. Before they hang me up for violent crimes, scribe my ills with quill and console my cries. My hope is bona fide. And they say that you live many lives. Well, I've committed self-genocide too many times. I romanticize the best demise. Cause in this blood sport, you need death to rise. No Nirvana, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Killer, wow. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, just such a powerful way of just the most vulnerable and bleakest thoughts, but in the most beautiful presentation. As in, like, when I say bleak, you know, when you're thinking about your demise and how you sort of, it, it's like they are the sort of things that you think out of sometimes. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 man, yeah. you've just got such a beautiful way of doing it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I um, appreciate you sharing your platform and, and sort of having me speak some of my some of my words. Well, I'd fucking love to see you live at some point. Like, uh, I've just moved back to Leeds from, <laughs> I've been living in London for a bit. So now that I'm up north, I'll, I'll be coming to Sheffield a lot more, get involved in like WordWise and, uh, not WordWise, sorry, WordLife. Word <laughs> you know. Oh man. Yeah. Brilliant. And, um, 
so you're working on a second collection potentially yeah definitely actually yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely working you, on a second collection yeah you've got your art you've got stuff going on youtube um yeah. so you've got plenty of stuff going on for us to keep an eye out and, and what about your debut collection where's the best place for us to buy that yeah sure so the debut collection is called safe metamorphosis um it's available on prototype so um that's an incredible independent publisher uh, in London. And yeah, you can get that on prototype.com. Uh, alternatively, you can head over to my website. That's www.otismensa.com. That's O-T-I-S-M-E-N-S-A-H. And that the, the book link on there will take you straight to the publisher and then you can order cool. a copy there. Um, so yeah. Yeah, definitely order it from there. Everybody watching, don't order it from any mainstream sites just because yeah, it's, sure. it's so much so important to support the publishers. Yeah, well, I make that mistake um, a lot. Yeah. I know, I know. I know. When it's like next day delivery and you're like, oh, but nah, it makes such a difference. Like well, if you're I mean, if you're up for it, it does, yeah. We've probably got we've probably got time for one more if you're up for it, but I don't want to put you on it's entirely up to you. I realise you know, yeah. you're giving up your time, so no, that's not a problem. So I can do, um, I'll do the first uh, verse that is linked to uh, the first song of the Otis Mentor Exists uh, series. Mm -hmm. So that I described earlier, so it's called Breath of Life. Um, and this is also on YouTube. So yeah, if you type in youtube.com slash Otis Mentor, or just type in Otis Mentor into your um, YouTube browser. So yeah, this one's called Breath of Life. Scared of the walls. Mercy, listen, mercy, soul. Mercy, me and gaping soul. From the core, my fears pull. Feel torn in every dream I fall. From the sky, your Lord was born to a pile of poultry on the floor. Falsely accused, my love contorts like ball when if your street could talk. I don't feel secure, I feel shakur. Every childhood portrait winks at me like they knew before, but I never saw. Wet myself to toss and turn. Home is you or someone there. That's why I don't ever leave the north. The stairwell plays minor scale. My pride impaled and dreams for sale. Leave me stale or see me sail. Watch me sink or see me hailed. My shadow disingenuous. He dances without me and finishes sentences. Has dinner without me and picks up my blemishes. I try to fend him, he kicks on my emptiness. Now I'm a degenerate. They solid with sorrow and somberness. Time borrowed the novice that sold itself short, bleeding out in the corridor ominous. Crack crayons on mirrors now. There are dirty, his name brave as the novelist. I sleep with the bayonet. Cause Sly is the orifice, time is the coroner. Live at the concert hall. Every head is just turning and churning. My stomach a worm in a bucket. I'm nothing that's gobbled. The bullet spit word out the gullet of godliness. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Absolutely loved that. That was so, so good. So Thank good. You so much. Appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your beautiful energy and your words and your skills. And I really, really appreciate it. I feel bad that it's taken me so long to have you on my radar, but I'm no, really glad cool. that you're on my radar. Appreciate that a lot. Appreciate that a lot. Cool. Well, hopefully I'll see you in Sheffield at some point soon. But either yeah. way, take care and uh, good luck with your, not good luck, just enjoy. You don't need good luck, but enjoy yeah. your, your yeah. endeavours. Thank you, man. Yeah, and you too. Um, much love. Take care. Take care, mate. See you later. That was the fantastic Otis Mensa. Uh, check out Otis's website. Um, obviously, follow him on, on the socials. Check out his debut collection. And keep an eye out for hashtag Otis Mensa exists as well. Um, really excited to see what... Um, what happens there. And yeah, I will try my best, Laura. I'll try my best to, to book Otis in Leeds at some point. It's not that far up the M1, is it? it it's not that far up the M1, is it? So I'll get him on. Um, next week, uh, our special guest is Roy, uh, and the host is Tori Agarbutt, which should be a very interesting session. So Roy from Liverpool and uh, Tori Agarbutt is going to be hosting. So make sure you tune in for that. That's Insta session number 45, same time, same place next week. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Matt Abbott. We are Nimson Thugs. See you later. Cheers. Yeah.